So um, let's have a look. I'm just going to go through. We don't have to give reasons, so I'm just going to go through, show you how I would work it out. So we've got lots of parallel lines here. So whenever we have parallel lines, remember, then a good thing to be looking for is do we have um, alternating angles? So that's that Z shape. Um, do we have corresponding angles, which is the F shape? Or do we have co-interior angles, which is the U shape? OK, so first of all, um, I can see angle F, we can use that Z shape. So we can say that F is 82 degrees. OK, we don't need the reason, so I'm going to get rid of this so we can see what we're doing a bit better. But we know then F is 82 degrees. If we were giving reasons, it would be corresponding angles would be our reason. Oh, sorry, alternate angles because it's the Z shape. Next up, let's see what we can do. So um, I think we could say that angle B and angle F are equal. We've got that F shape there. OK, so again, that would be corresponding angles because we've got the F shape. I'm going to get rid of this again so we can see what we're doing. But we know then angle B is also 82 degrees. Then let's have a look. Um, angle A, we can also use an F shape for. So if we go like this, we can say, OK, that angle and that. So it's an upside down F, but A is also 82 degrees. OK, and then let's see. OK, I'm going to work out this angle in here. They haven't asked us to work it out, but sometimes it's just useful to have. So that angle, how we would do it is angles on a straight line would add up to 180. So you would say 180 take away 82 gives me 98 degrees. OK, so we know that angle in there is 98 degrees. I know they haven't asked us to work it out, but sometimes it just helps to have the full picture. So that's 98 degrees. Um, let's see what else we can do then. Probably what I would say is I would work out angles on a straight line to work out C. So it's a little bit strange, but you probably have seen this before. So I would say angles on a straight line there would add up to 180. OK, so we would have A plus C plus C gives us 180 because they're on a straight line. We know A is 82. So we could say 180 take away 82 is 98, and then divided by 2 because there are two Cs. OK, so let's go 98 divided by 2 is 49. OK, then we know that each of those Cs is 49. So let's write that in there. So that's 49, and that's 49. And then I think we've basically solved everything we're going to need to in a way. So next up, I can see we can use alternating angles. So that's the Z shape. We can use it like this. OK, so that and that's our equal. OK, so D is also 49. And then my last step would be working out E with angles on a straight line. OK, so I would then say 180 take away the 49 would give me D. So 180 take away 49 gives me 131. OK, so I've got 49 and 31. OK, they want us then to write it in the box below and write each of those. So I'm not going to rewrite it because we've got it all on the graph. But then in the exam, you would just say, a is 82, B is 82, okay, just going through it like that. Okay, so with these ones, there was a lot to work out there. I would just go through, work out as much as you can. Um, let's see how many marks this question is. Okay, six marks. Generally, people can find at least three of these. So that's already three easy marks that you can get. Um, there were very possibly different ways of getting it, so just check that you got the same numbers. Let's keep going. I think we've got a few more of these to work out. Huh?
Calculate the value of each letter in the following, show your workings and give reasons. Okay, so this one, we are gonna set it up a little bit different. They want our workings and then they want our reasons. And so if they want the reasons, that means they're definitely gonna give us marks for reasons. So make sure you take the time to put them down. So let's just divide that. Okay, so let's have a look here. So we first of all, we want A and we want B. So I'd say let's work out A first because that's not too bad to work out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say A, we can add up all the angles in the triangle. Okay, so we could say 45 plus 80 plus A gives me 180. Our reason is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle if you add up all the angles of a triangle, they always add up to 180. Okay, so let's just work this out. So how we could work that out then is 180, take away the 45, take away the 80. Okay, let's do that one. 180, take away 45, take away 80. So we are left with 55. Okay, so I'm just, I just fill it in as I go because it helps me to see what, what I'm doing. So A is 55. And then you could, there's two ways that you could work out B. So B, um, you can either do angles on a straight line. So you could say B plus that gives me 180. Okay, that's probably what I do just because that's quite straightforward. The other method you could do is you could say B is equal to 45 plus 80. And that reason would be because it's an exterior angle of a triangle. Okay, so whichever one you want to do, I would just usually go for the simplest. So I'm just going to say 55 plus B is equal to 180 degrees. And my reason is going to be angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees. They have to give you the mark whichever way you do it. So then we can work out 180, take away that 55. And so we get that B is equal to 125 degrees. Okay, we've got another question like this. So again, work out, give reasons. Okay, so let's do our workings on this side. And our reasons on this side. And they just want us to find C here. Okay, so this is a question that they ask quite a lot. They want us to try remember vertically opposite angles. Okay, so if we've got this X shape like this, that's your clue. So in an X shape, we know that this angle here is equal to this angle here. Okay, so C plus C, so both of those Cs will give us 80. Our reason is always vertically opposite angles are equal. Okay, they ask this one a lot, so they want you to try to remember whenever you see that X shape, you've got to remember the angles inside it are equal. So the same. They haven't given us any angles here, but we could say this angle here is equal to this angle there because of that X shape. Okay, um, let's carry on with this one. So if we've got um, C plus C is equal to 80, so we need two things that add up to 80. So then we can say one way of working it out is saying 80 divided by 2 is 40. Okay, so C is 40 because if you go 40 plus 40, you'll get 80. Okay, so that one they were really just testing. You remember that vertically opposite angles are equal to each other. Okay, and then we have to work out this one. So they give us some parallel lines, yeah? So as soon as they give us these arrows, that means we've got parallel lines, which means we need to be looking, can we use corresponding angles? Can we use alternating angles? Or can we use cointary angles? Those could be things that we could use. Um, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to use vertically opposite angles again okay so it's a little bit different the x is a little bit strange but we do have an x shape there which means that e is 74 degrees okay because they are opposite each other okay so like i said they like bringing that one up so again we've got our workings just set it up nicely if you make the examiner's life easy they're more likely to give you marks so workings and reasons okay so i'm going to say um E is 74 degrees. Our reason again, vertically 
opposite angles are equal. Then after that, what I would do is if I wanted to work out D, I would do angles on a straight line. Okay, always look for that one because it's such a simple one and you can use it so often. So I would say angles on a straight line. So 74 plus D gives me 180 degrees. Okay, the reason angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So if we work this out, 180 take away 74 gives me 106. So D is 106 degrees. Okay, and then lastly, we need to work out F. I think this is where our parallel lines will probably come in handy. So if we look at F here, we can probably work out with an F shape here. Um, nope, not quite. Yeah, so it's going to be like this. Okay, let me just redraw this quick. So we can work out with this F shape here. So we can say 74 is equal to F. The reason is we've got this F shape here. It is a very funny sideways F, upside down. But yeah, so we can say those two angles there are equal to each other. So our reasoning then is going to be F is 74 degrees. Our reason is with F shape, it's corresponding angles are equal. And you always have to, to get the mark for corresponding angles, you have to say um, these lines are parallel. Um, they haven't really given us labels for these lines. So I would maybe label the lines just in case. What I would do is, let's get rid of this. I think I would draw on and say this line is A, B. This line is C, D. Okay, so those are the lines. So then I could say those lines are parallel. So I would say line A, B is parallel to line C, D. Okay, just usually if you're going to use that reason of corresponding angles, they want to see what angles, what lines are equal or parallel, sorry. Okay, and then we've got... A triangle question, again, they love asking. I said earlier, I think in part one, whenever they you see these two lines, they love asking these isosceles triangles. Um, so like I said, this is an isosceles triangle. The reason we know that is because we've got two sides that are equal. My trick for an isosceles triangle, if the two sides are equal, I imagine they are little arrows, okay? Because then it's telling you that this angle is equal to that angle. OK, so if we are going to show our workings and our reasoning again, let's go workings. And our reasons. Wow, that's awful. <laughs> OK, so workings and our reasons. We could say then, so angle H is equal to angle I. The reason is opposite angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. So then we can add these all up. So we could say um, 50 plus H plus I is equal to 180 degrees. Again, this is the argument we use all the time with triangles. So if we, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180, which is just a fancy way of saying if you add all the angles up, they add up to 180. Um, so then let's get these by themselves. So we can say then H plus I is equal to 180 minus the 50. So H plus I is equal to 130 degrees. We know that these two angles are equal, so we can go 130 divided by 2 gives us 65. 
Okay, so then we know H is 65 and I is 65. Okay, like I said, this is a question they ask all the time. They always want to test that you remember isosceles triangle. These two angles are equal. So this one is 65 and that one is 65. And then you can check and together that will all add up to 180. Okay, so that would be your check. Once you've got angles, if you check, do that add up to 180, then you know you're most likely right. Okay, and then I think one more question to go. Yeah, last question we've got here. Um, so again, we need workings. It's a nice thing about um, these kind of papers. So you can get a lot of marks just for writing down what you remember. Okay, so let's see. Is the last question in the paper, so it tends to be a little bit more tricky, but we can do this quite easily. So again, we've got these parallel lines. So we know because we've got these little arrows here, so that line is parallel to that line, which means we're going to be looking for the F shape, the Z shape, or the U shape. So here straight away we can see we have got this Z shape. Okay, so that is our Z shape, which means that this angle is equal to this angle. Okay, sorry, it's not drawing now. Ah, give it a sec. Okay, there we go. So we know that this 2G plus 30 is equal to that 60. Our reason is we're going to say alternate angles are equal. We should ideally say that those lines are parallel. So again, I would just label just in case. It's just a step further, but it just shows you really know what you're doing. Okay, so we're going to say that line AB is parallel to the line CD. So that's why we can use that alternate angle because if they're not parallel, we can't use that reason. Okay, then we just need to work it out. So it's kind of an algebra question here. So I would take the 30 across first. So I was adding 30. If I take it across, I'm going to subtract 30. So 2G is 60 take away 30. So that means 2G is 60 take away 30 is just 30. Um, I was timesing by 2, that means I'm going to divide by 2. So G is 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Okay, we don't need any other reasons. That was us just working out some algebra. I really hope this helped. Please let me know if you have any other questions as you're preparing for your exams, and all the best.